Welcome back to another video. Today we are here with Casey, the CEO and founder of Scottsdale Bachelorette. He started Scottsdale Bachelorette just a couple of short years ago and has quickly scaled to being the number one bachelorette party planning company here in Scottsdale, Arizona, planning nearly a thousand bachelorette parties a year. And today we're gonna break down how he got to where he's at, how he scaled this incredible company. He's got 14 employees now. And Casey, I really appreciate you having us here Thank and I'm so excited much. to jump into it. Can't wait. So of all the parties that you know you're planning, what is the average uh, kind of cost or the average budget of a bachelorette party? Yeah, so we typically find them spending between $1,000 and $2,000 per person on this weekend. If you think about the hotel and the activities and the decorations and all those things, and the group splits that, you know, splits the cost of it for the bride and for the experience. So that's typically what we find. Our packages for our decor ranges anywhere from like $600 to $1,200, just depending on how much they're looking for it in there. And then, you know, we're constantly trying to find ways of like, okay, well, what other things are they spending money on that we can help with, right? So whether that's gift bags or accessories or transportation, you know, that's sort of what we're focused on, helping to provide more services and more add-ons for those groups as well. Sure, yeah, yeah. you've evolved a lot over, yeah. I mean, I, we did a podcast about, I don't know how long ago, maybe not even a year ago. Yeah. And uh, to see even where you've come since then in terms of the different add-ons and everything, uh, talk to me a little bit about that. I know you just got a van. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you have three total vans, but you got one van to where you can actually go and pick them up from the airport, right? Yeah. What, what kind of led you to think that that would be a good idea? So one of the great things is through our website, they can book a, a host of different activities, experiences, and services that are provided by third-party partners. So what's really great about that is it gives us immediate insight into what they're booking. So, you know, as, a, as an entrepreneur, I'm thinking, okay, well, what are we referring out that maybe we can internalize and do, right? So uh, with the gift bags, for instance, we noticed a lot of groups were sending us gift bags. They were bags or tumblers or things like that. And so we thought, well, why don't we just start offering that and selling it ourselves? And then the same thing for transportation. You know, a lot of groups were saying, hey, we want to be picked up from the airport, taken to our Airbnb or vice versa. And so I said, well, why don't we just get a van and start offering that and see if it, if it picks up and it's been great yeah. so far. Wow, I love that. And what is like, are there different levels? I know, you know, a little while ago, a little while ago we were talking about like a VIP package. Yeah. So what is the difference between like maybe a VIP package or like a regular package? Yeah, so we have three different levels of the decor packages. There's basic, deluxe, and VIP. And the difference there is how much they're getting in the package. Okay. So if maybe they're on a budget, they just want a little bit of decor, maybe just a backdrop and something special for the bride's room, that would be our basic package. Our deluxe package comes with a lot more bells and whistles. You've got more signs, more streamers, more balloons. And then our VIP package comes with all the bells and whistles. So you've got helium balloons, you've got a welcome sign, you've got all these extra customized things to make it even better. And the reason why we wanted to do that is to be able to accommodate different budgets. Before we just had one package and it was one offering, but what about the people that want to spend more money and they want yeah. to go more all out? And what about the groups that maybe don't have that big of a budget? How can we accommodate them as well? So that's really sure. where we come up with the different levels. I love that. And we're obviously in an Airbnb right now, yes. right? And uh, you know the owner of the Airbnb yep. uh, here. So you you guys, you know, we obviously came in and, and watched you, you know, decorate the whole Airbnb. And you said the party will get here in a couple of hours from yep. now. So you get there before them. Yep. I mean, literally the bride, they walk in the door and it is like completely done, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's really based off of like two things. One is like the wow factor, right? So being able to walk into your Airbnb for your bachelorette weekend and 
experience this moment of seeing the house for the first time, everything's decorated, everything looks beautiful, and then also the simplicity of it, right? These groups are traveling in from New York, Chicago, Canada sometimes. Wow. And so they don't want to come with a suitcase full of decorations and have to get the bride out of the house and do all these things. So the logistics of traveling to a city really create an opportunity for us to say, hey, we can do those services for you here locally and do it in a way that we can work with the host or we can get the code from you and get it done before you even arrive. Yeah. You know, it's just that VIP moment of, hey, this was already done for me and everything's ready to go and you're ready to have a good time. And you'll even do like pool floaties, yep. like the whole thing, right? And, and another thing you mentioned is that um, and what package is it or is it an add-on where you'll actually go to the store and you'll stock the fridge and do everything like that for them too, right? Yeah, so we'll do that as an add-on service. We call it fridge stocking. So basically they just place an online pickup order at the local grocery store. We pick that order up for them, take it to the house and stock everything away. That way they've got all their food and drinks ready to go for the weekend. Such a phenomenal business. So to see, again, how far you've come in a couple of short years is so inspirational for anybody watching. I mean, it's really cool to see what you've done. We talked a minute ago about the fact that we got here at the same time that the girls got here. They drove the van, right? Yep. And uh, I mean, in a matter of literally 20 minutes, they were in, they were out, they got the, the balloon. I mean, literally everything. They got, we got the cookies, they did the bride's room. There must have been quite a bit of prep to get it to the point where they're able to get into an Airbnb and get it done in 20 minutes. Walk me through how you've been able to streamline it. Yeah, so that's kind of the magic of having done this for a couple of years now and then also having preset packages. So whenever a group picks a package, for instance, this one's called Vuv Before Vows, we have it down to a system. Um, each team member is assigned for a different responsibility. We do a lot of prep work at the office to blow up balloons, get everything ready, and then everyone has an assigned role so they can go in and quickly execute. So that helps us not only get through the day faster, but also be able to scale and take on more parties. You know, some days we're doing 20 parties or 30 parties in a day, and so we have to be able to go back to back to get everyone set up and, and get it done before their check-in, right? Yeah. <laughs> before they get there. Which is insane. I mean, the idea that you're doing potentially 20 to 30 parties in a day, I mean, we were talking a little bit a minute ago about the fact that like obviously we're in Scottsdale I asked you I said hey you know Scottsdale and Nashville seem to me like the most popular kind of bachelorette you know destinations yeah. but I mean that is a lot of bachelorette parties and I mean figure you you don't have all the market share oh no, yeah we're only handling a portion of them right, right. so it's, it's really crazy how Scottsdale has blown up as this bachelorette destination. I mean, you've got these amazing Airbnbs that they can rent, beautiful sunny weather, virtually year round. And these groups are coming in from you know Chicago or New York or all these different places, and they wanna have an amazing experience here. So we're able to help create that with you know these types of services. And you've been able to vertically integrate a lot of other types of services, obviously, as time has gone along, right? Yeah. And um, you know, not, not only that, you've been able to collaborate, I feel like, with a lot of local businesses and really um, I mean, even just Airbnb owners, I mean, yeah. you don't currently own any Airbnbs, but you're, I don't want to say partnered, but you know all the big Airbnb hosts, they design, you know, a lot of the properties for bachelorette parties. Yeah. And we were even talking about like the cookies a minute ago, right? Yeah. So talk to me about that aspect of partnering up with, you know, local people that really make everything all come together so seamlessly. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the things is we're all part of creating one experience, right? We want all these groups to have an amazing bachelorette weekend in Scottsdale and an amazing time in Scottsdale so that they go back and they tell their friends and they wanna come back here again to visit, right? So we're only handling one portion of that, but there's a number of other businesses, whether it's Airbnb hosts, whether it's experience providers that are doing you know, private chefs or cabana boys or you know, ATV tours, all these different things. And so we've really tried to search out you know, what are the best partners that we've done, that we can find that can, you know, provide, help supplement a really incredible experience for these groups. So the cookies, for instance, we work with a great company called Cookie Brokers. You know, they're not like, you know, a one person show in their kitchen making really these really awesome cookies. They've got a whole team and they can do really big volume. And so it's about finding the right companies that really align with what we're trying to do. Um, but then also they're gonna create an amazing experience for these groups. You were telling me a minute ago that when you first started out, you were having everybody send you everything. Yeah. And then over time, that evolved. Tell me a little bit about what you were talking about in terms of it evolving to where it's at today. Yeah, so when I first started the decorating business, I just was like, well, just send me your decorations and I'll set it up for you, right? So I was in my condo and there was packages coming every single day of all these different decor items. And I no sort of noticed trends, right? So for instance, with pool floats, they would always send a diamond ring or a cactus, right? Very appropriate here for Scottsdale in Arizona. Or they're going gravitating towards certain themes like Scottsdale Before the Veil or Final Fiesta. And so that kind of led me to believe like, okay, this, these clients are trying to tell us something right they they are obviously doing certain themes and certain things that are incorporated with that so why don't we just charge more and include those things mm -hmm. on our own right and then what's really great is we get to reuse a lot of the items and it helps us save 
costs and also you know reduce okay reduce landfill and things yeah. like that so these pool floats for instance that we've got here you know we're able to use them quite a few times before they start to lose their luster and we need to replace them and so you know that was kind of the where it started was you know send us your decor and then we thought like let's go ahead and put together some different packages so that you know people can just pick a package and it makes it so much easier for them yeah i love that and and the idea naturally as human beings we like to have options so i love yeah. that you evolved into having like you know like for example you did the deluxe package here right yeah. and now the idea of being able to go and like pick the package that's perfect for you yeah i think is just uh it plays perfectly into the human psychology of what we all want at the yeah. end of the day right yeah um and then obviously that led to like things like batch in a box right yeah. talk to me a little bit about that yeah so we're we're constantly trying to figure out ways of like we can't accommodate everybody right maybe we're not for everyone's budget or what they need so how can we you know do different things with the business without cannibalizing our own services right so we recently launched batch in the box which is basically like hey we'll drop off a box that you can just assemble and put up yourself um, at a much lower cost cost than if they were to book our decor services ourselves. Got so it. maybe they, they want the decorations, but they want to save some money by doing it themselves. We've got a lot of people that love DIY, they love Pinterest and all that stuff. So how do we cater to that market as well? Got it. I love the idea of like, really, you have such a mind for trying to figure out how to cater to every market if possible, right? Yeah. But at the same time, making sure that you're still running a profitable company. Yeah. Obviously, you have 14 employees. I know roughly 12 of them are part time, a couple yeah. are full time, correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And I love that, right? And being able to really cater to everybody. So walk me through the deluxe package. Yeah. Uh, that package costs how much? $950. $950. Yeah. Okay. And what about the top tier? So does it go deluxe and then VIP? Yep. So VIP is going to be closer to $1,200. Mm -hmm. And that gets some extra bells and whistles like a sign, an extra balloon garland, helium balloons, and some of those things. So trying to cater towards yep. someone that maybe has a little bit of a deeper pocket or wants to spend a little bit more on sure. that experience. And what about batch in a box? How much? Batch in a box is $150. $150. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's it's a very low price point, but again, doesn't require any setup, any prep, anything like that. We can just basically ship them out. You could be anywhere in the country, really, where we could just ship it to you, or we can drop it off at your Airbnb, and it's a box full of decorations that you can just set up yourself. Holy cow. And is that becoming more popular? It's just It just launched, so we just launched it yesterday. Yeah. Um, but we've had people ask us you know, if they can ship us their decorations, and it's not really something we want to set up ourselves, but there is a group. You know, There's obviously a lot of people that don't hire us that do set up their own decorations, yeah. so we figure that there's another market for there as well. I hope you're enjoying the business tour so far. Really quick, if you wouldn't mind, if you know of a business that you think would be a really cool tour, or if you own a business that you would like to get featured, all you have to do is text 480-418-5339, the word business, okay? Again, 480-418-5339, the word business, and we'll see if you qualify or if the business qualifies for us to go ahead and tour it. Now let's just go ahead and get back to the tour. How are you currently dealing with seasonality of you know the bachelorette kind of party planning you know industry? Yeah, so our season is really like mid February through early October, and so that leaves quite a few months, as you can imagine, October through early February, where we really don't get a lot of parties. And so we're doing that in a couple ways. Number one is we're launching other services for Airbnbs. So for instance, this year we're going to start doing Christmas decorations. Mm. So for groups that are coming in for that. Um, but honestly, what's, we have such a great business in those months that you know it allows us to survive in those slower months as well. So we really yeah. try to pack in all of the all the work that we can do in that time, so we can take a little break. But it's also a good time for us to kind of reevaluate and plan and strategize for the following year. I love that. Yeah. And will you gross over a million dollars this year? Can we safely assume that yes. you'll you'll pull that off? <laughs> yeah, we. It, it's crazy. I think it was like at, at the end of last year that I had brought in a million gross um, for the business to date, right? Yeah. And then we were quickly able to, to do another million this year. So it's really exciting to see the business grow. I mean, obviously your expenses yeah. grow with that as well, they but do, yeah. um, but it's, you know, it's a really healthy, amazing business that we're excited about. And how does that feel as an entrepreneur, being able to accomplish that? And uh, you know, what does that feel like? It feels amazing. I mean, yeah. I think that, you know, having a su su successful business that's obviously bringing revenue is great. But I think even what I love even more is just the fact that being an entrepreneur, it's allowed me more time with my family, with mm -hmm. my fiance, you know, more time for myself to do things like take the trips I want to do. So I think like that level of happiness mm -hmm. that being an entrepreneur has brought me has been way more than, you know, the financial gain as well. Casey, we're here at uh, Scottsdale Bachelor at headquarters. Yeah. Yep. So give us a tour. Absolutely. So welcome to our office. We're here in Old Town Scottsdale. Um, when you first walk in, we've got this amazing reception area. Um, we use this mostly for our team, but also we do luggage storage. So we've got people that come in and drop off their luggage. Um, over here, we've got our sort of conference and meeting area. 
And uh, what we love about this is when you first walk in, you get to see all the amazing pictures of our groups that we've done parties for in the past. And then each one of these signs actually uh, is from a real bachelorette party that we did. No so way. we like to kind of keep those as a souvenir and uh, kind of make them into a wallpaper. That's actually kind of really cool. Yeah, we yeah. like it. It's, you, it's a good reminder of the work. Do you know the total number of bachelorette parties that you've done now? Uh, it's got to be over 2,000, I wow. imagine, at this point. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, yeah. well yeah. over 2,000. So. So yeah, that's kind of our office area. If you move over here, this is our little cubby area where we store our things when we come in. Um, over here, this is my desk. And okay. then over here, this is uh, one of our team members, Viviana. Um, we started getting into, as I mentioned, sort of gift bags and some, some more custom work. Yeah. So we've got our Cricut machine here that's printing our vinyl and allowing us to do a lot of that customization. Sure. Um, what, what are you customizing typically now? Like cups and stuff like that? Yeah, or? so like cups, gift bags, we even do hats, visors, uh, fanny packs, oh, wow. um, and even some lettering on the backdrop, right? So if you've got a plain backdrop with no text on it, we can you know make it Austin's Final Fiesta wow. or something like that. Awesome. Make it more customized. Yeah. So moving on here, we've got, um, this is our TV, so we have our schedule on here, we have reviews, we have our Instagram. This is just great because it keeps sort of our priority and our focus sort of front and center. Yeah. Um, and then this is sort of our main workspace area. Yep. So you notice it's very open and very, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've got this giant workspace here, but it's really so that we can sort of assemble everything that we need for the week. So for each one of our parties, we pack each one with one of these bins mm -hmm. that you see over here. And so each one of these represents one of the parties that we're setting up for the week. We've already got a bunch that we're out there setting up right yeah. now, um, but each one has the right number of cups, the right number of straws, the oh, right wow. number of recovery kits. You know, basically everything that we need for that group, we have it already pre-packed. That way when we get there, we just unload it. And you said a out. recovery kit? Yes, hang What's a recovery kit? hangover recovery kit. Okay. <laughs> so it's got, it's a little satchel. I'll show you here yeah. actually if you want. I'd love that. Um, so this one is for our Days and Engaged. Okay. So it says staying alive on yep. it. Um, and inside we've got um, lots of goodies to help you with your okay. hangover. So we've got a ring pop, okay. you know, very appropriate for the bachelorette parties. Um, we've got a no days wasted hydration mm -hmm. packet. We've got a makeup wipe remover, and then we've even got some Advil in there wow. for you for your. For I your love headache. that. So yeah, uh, Talk that about way. an experience. Yeah, for sure. And trying to help. You really thought about everything. <laughs> trying to make sure that they're taken care of so they yeah. continue the party. I love that. And how yep. many recovery kits did you say are in that one? Um, so each one comes with one for each member of the party. Um, okay. Our packages come standard with ten, but they can add on more if they're a group of twelve or fourteen or whatever. Yeah. Um, we really try to make the quantity of everything match the number of guests that are in the party, so I that way that. everyone gets one. What is the average yeah. number of people? in a bachelorette party? Usually about 10 to 12 is okay. what we see. We've, we've seen some groups go up to like 18 and then you know some smaller groups that are around like six or seven, but it seems like 10 to 12 is really the sweet spot for most groups. Yeah. Anything larger than that can be tough to like get reservations and get into places and then you gotta get two tables instead of sure. one at the nightclub. So um, 10 seems to be a really good sweet spot yeah. for sure. You've got everything organized over here by, how do you have it organized? By theme. So okay. we basically split up everything so that when we go to pack for a certain um, party that we're doing, everything's already there ready to go. So this one here is Final Fiesta. We've got all of our straws, our napkins, our recovery kits, our backdrops are down here, yep. um, our balloons that we use for that, Final Fiesta, Scottsdale Before the Veil, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. What is the, the most line. popular theme that you guys do? Desert Disco this year has been super popular. Wow. So disco has been making a very big comeback. You know, people love the glitz and glam of the disco balls and the shimmery. But then also like what we found is people really want to pick a theme that's unique to Scottsdale, right? So with Desert Disco, we've got a lot of these like oranges and yellows and mm -hmm. sort of tan colors in here. Um, and people love that, you know, it's yeah. a very, you know, very aesthetic type of a look there for that. Sure. Um, Scottsdale Before the Veil has always been very popular. That's gonna be kind of like your rose gold and greens and golds and things like that. And then Final Fiesta. So I'd say those are our top three from- In order. Know, in order, yep. Yeah, I yep. love that. You've got a lot of balloons over here, I know. Yes. And you have even oh, more fun. balloons in the back, which we yes. saw a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of where we have like our easily accessible balloons. So, you know, what's interesting about building balloon garlands and doing this business is you have to have all different colors, all different sizes to make it that, you know, really Really nice organic look. So we've got all different sizes of balloons here, um, all the way down from the tiny ones, the five inch ones, all the way up to big 18 inch ones. And yeah. this is where we quickly, okay, if we're doing a final fiesta, we'll grab, you know, the orange and green and we'll set them out here on the table and we'll build the garlands. 
throw them in a bag and then we keep them in the back until we're ready to start yeah. the party. How long did it take? Are you a professional balloon garland expert? I mean, are you- I've gotten you... pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty good. So yeah. I just kind of taught myself. I downloaded some videos and kind of learned how to make them and sort of taught the team as we went along. And so sure. it's just one of those things with practice, you get better and better at it. So, yeah, I yeah. love that. And then what are you guys doing in the back back yeah. here? Yeah, so in the back here, we've got all of our pool floats and then we've got a whole bunch of balloon bags that are ready yeah. to be blown up and ready to go. So once we build the garlands, we stuff them with the letter balloons that they need. You know, each one for each theme has a certain color, certain letters that go with it. And so we have those all ready to go. So again, just like the buckets, it's yeah. already in a package. We just bring it out the door and we can set it up. And you were saying when you put all the balloons like in a bag like that, they'll actually end up lasting longer too? Yeah, so they do a process called oxidization where ox ox oxidization, mm -hmm. yes. Um, they do a process called oxidization where they basically will start to get um, a little bit more tarnished, kind of dull. So you really want to keep them in those bags so that mm -hmm. they don't prevent that, prevents that process from happening. Very interesting. Yep. Yeah. And then you just take those, you go put them in the van yep. or the girls put them in the van or whoever, and then you're off. Yeah. It's, it, wow. if we can make it through the doorway, yeah. <laughs> that's well, the tough and part. And you do have the thing yeah. out back, right? Yeah. So, so you, you can roll up door back. kind of, t if we can line up the vans and take them out yeah. that way, that's always best. Um, but if we just got a few, we'll usually just head out in the parking lot and do it that way. How many like um, bachelorette parties can you like put in one van before you have to get bring the van back and, and reload the van? We can usually fit four, sometimes five, okay. but that's like trying to you know, trying yeah. to close the door to make it fit. Um, it's it's kind of like a clown car in there with everything sure. like bursting out. Um, but usually about four to five, and then we come back and reload. And so that's why we've got two vans as well, so we can have two teams out there operating simultaneously. Um, and then once they, you know, get rid of all their things, they'll come back. A lot of times take a lunch, that type of thing, and then be able to head back out and do yeah. their thing again. I love that. Let's go take a look at where they're taking the lunch. And I yeah. want to talk to you a little bit too, you know, as we walk back there, like talk to me about, uh, actually, you know, getting in employees and where, where are you finding, you know, good employees? Yeah. I mean, I think what's really interesting about this business is that people want to work for us, mm -hmm. which is amazing. I mean, we get people that reach out to us all the time on Instagram and through our yeah. website saying like, Hey, are you guys hiring? Um, you know, it's fun work. And I think yeah. a lot of people that are young and, you know, are interested in this type of work, they really want to be part of the team. So, you know, we'll even collect, even if we're not hiring, we'll collect their information, have them fill out an application. That way we can reach out whenever the time's right yeah. and see if they want to join the team and kind of do an interview with them from there. You have an awesome culture right behind you. You actually yeah. have a lot of the parties that you've done. Yeah. Uh, or like events with yeah, your actual events. team, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's unfortunate because like we're doing all the work behind the scenes, but we don't get to do the partying. You know, every, I think a lot of people, when they think about working for a bachelorette party like, that must be so much fun you get to just party all the time yeah. it's like that's not it at all like we're doing all the hard work that goes into planning the party so we really try to make space for like making sure our team has a chance to recharge and energize and have a really good time so that opens up a lot of fun opportunities where we're able to do like hibachi chef together as a team or go check out cala scottsdale as a team and you know those places are great about wanting us to come there to be able to showcase their facilities as well in their events so it's kind of like a collab we're able to you know have a really great experience and then share that with the rest of our groups as well. I love that. Yeah. And for anybody watching, you know, I know being an entrepreneur, I've I've learned that, you know, building a culture and, you know, getting good employees and really having a, an environment where people like to work can actually be very difficult. Yeah. What would be your number one piece of advice if you had to just give the watcher a piece of advice on building a phenomenal culture? I think it's all about making sure that people love their jobs and that they're having fun and that they also understand how the work that they're doing makes a difference, right? So something I try to do is make sure that when we get good reviews, for instance, or we get really great feedback from a group, that our team gets to see that because it's really easy when you're in the day-to-day -day and it's 110 degrees outside and you're sweating and you're like, you, do, you just wanna be done with your day. Um, to realize that you're actually making a really special moment for somebody. And so I think the team is, you know, finds that really fun to be part of that experience for people. And, you know, it's up to me and up to the leadership to make sure that we're showcasing that as well. Yeah. Now, obviously we're here in a really cool place and we've got kind of a warehouse, like flex, you know, industrial yeah. type of vibe. Like when did you kind of get into this? And like, at what point did you, did you evolve? Cause I imagine when you started, you were yeah. just, you started out of your condo, right? Yeah, I was out of my condo, just had all the boxes sort of in my closet type of a thing. And then I quickly was like, okay, this is getting too much. So I got a storage unit and then I got a much smaller space next to this. Um, and you can kind of feel as a business when you're starting to outgrow your space. And I think it's always scary as an entrepreneur to be like, oh, I'm gonna be taking on this additional cost of like, 
you know, thousands of dollars a month in rent or whatever it is. But you know, if that money that you're spending ends up helping you grow the business mm -hmm. and you're able to get a bigger return on that, then you have to think about it that way. And so yeah. that's the way I've always kind of thought about, you know, spending money on a van or on the spaces. Hey, if this is going to allow us to grow as a business, then doing this and making this investment is actually going to make us money yeah. right and create a better environment for our team and all that good stuff as well yeah, yeah yeah in order to scale you have to invest and you have to be you know constantly looking at ways that you can grow and evolve and a lot of times it is by just reinvesting back in right so casey you were telling me a little while ago you've over twenty thousand people a month that are visiting scottsdale bachelorette that's pretty insane yeah we've gotten some really great traffic i mean one of the biggest reasons for that is that when i named the business I wanted to make sure it was something so that when people search, they'd be able to find us, right? Because if someone's coming in from out of town, how are they gonna find a business like ours? So I decided to call the business Scottsdale Bachelorette. It's not super creative, but it's great for SEO. It's great for when people search on Instagram and TikTok and all those things. And so for that reason, now, whenever you search Scottsdale Bachelorette or Scottsdale Bachelorette Party, we're fortunate enough to be that first organic result that comes up. How in the world did you get that name? I just got it. No one else. <laughs> it was available. ScottsdaleBachelorette.com was available. Really? The business name was available with the Chamber of Commerce. And, you know, like I said, it was 2018. It was right at the beginning of this trend of people coming here for these bachelorette parties. There was really only one other company in town that was doing it, and their name had nothing to do with Scottsdale or bachelorette parties. So um, I grabbed it, and it's worked out great. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, the SEO has got to be insane on that, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. It helps yeah. us get a ton of traffic. And so, you know, with that, we try to think about, okay, great. If we can capture them and they book some of our services, wonderful. And if not, you know, we can definitely try to monetize that in different ways to with referrals or advertising or whatever it might be. Yeah. Talk to me about what you have in front of you. So this is yes. the Discover Scottsdale kind of magazine that you have. I know you have yeah. kind of an online version with QR codes and then you have obviously the print version, right? Yeah. So the print version, we leave this at the houses with the that we decorate so that the groups, if they need recommendations on, you know, where to eat or where to go out for nightlife, they have all that right there at their fingertips. But we also offer a downloadable guide through our mm -hmm. website. And we do that for a couple reasons. One is, you know, it's really nice to have that resource as you're planning, just something you can quickly download with everything that you need. Um, but then also trying to encourage them to book more activities and excursions directly through us. And when they download it, we're able to capture their name, their email address, their party arrival date. So that puts them into our marketing flow so that we can then, you know, send them emails or text messages and, you know, try to continue and convert them into, into customers of ours. You've done such a phenomenal job, I feel like, as an entrepreneur, you know, monetizing different things over the years that clearly in the beginning you weren't monetizing. And then yeah. over time you learn like, oh my gosh, like if I'm gonna refer people here or there or whatever the case is, like I, I need to, you know, get compensated for that obviously. Yeah. Which is, I mean, truly what every entrepreneur should be thinking about, right? Yeah. How do I provide phenomenal customer service? Obviously that is always number one, but two, I've got to get compensated for it. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about how you've been able to do that with a lot of like the nightlife and the clubs and things of that nature. Yeah, so it really started off with, um, you know, the services like Private Chef or Cabana Boys, things like that. Those are very easy to get referral commissions from. And what's great is a lot of these businesses are more than happy to give you a referral commission because, you know, it's really difficult for them to be found. You know, they're not called Scottsdale mm -hmm. Bachelorette or Scott still private chef, right? So yeah. when someone's looking for that, that can be really difficult. And so we first start out off by saying, okay, what are some of the best of the best in the industry that we would want to refer to, mm -hmm. right? Who are really great partners that can handle volume, that can do a lot of parties, that provide a really amazing experience. And then we partnered with them on a referral basis so that whenever we do refer them, they'll give us a commission. So that's mm -hmm. one way that we're able to monetize. Um, the restaurants and nightlife, as you can imagine, is much more difficult yeah. there because you can't track how much spe someone spent at dinner sure. and ask for a commission back on that, right? And so we try Try different things. We work with promoters and things like that to see if we can get you know some type of kickback whenever someone books a table. Um, but that just didn't really work. So what we decided to do instead was to launch an advertising program. Mm. So we have you know a number of advertisers in the nightlife space that now promote on our website and then also through this guide that they yeah. can download or get in print. And then whenever someone wants to book a table or book a reservation, they can do that directly through our website. And then it goes directly to the venue so that they can follow with them and get them booked. I love that. And what I love about it more than anything, it really is was trial and error. Yeah. You know, it goes back to, I think we were talking about a little while ago, right? Which is like you taking action, trying to figure out like, okay, how do I really put this all together? you know, obviously maybe it not working out the way that you planned or whatever, and then you actually being able to take and kind of reconfigure it to, to work, you know, in everybody's favor, right? Yeah, you've got to, I mean, you, you have a need there, right? You know that there's something there. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how do you attack it? And you have to try different ways, I think, to see what works and be willing to say like, ah, oh, I'll give this a try. Maybe it won't work, maybe it will. 
Um, but then once you get it right, then it ends up being a win-win for everybody. Sure. Talk to me about working with Airbnb hosts. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so curious. Obviously, Scottsdale is uh, an insane place for yeah, Airbnb, right? Mecca, yeah. Uh, you know, I'd say we talked a little while ago, like that in Nashville. Yeah. Um, but Scottsdale, I feel like, is its own beast when it comes to the Airbnb world. Yeah. You know, have how have you found working with Airbnb hosts? Um, you know, have you been able to integrate that? Is it, um, do you have certain ones or like are people going, booking the Airbnb and then reaching out to you? Like how does all of that kind of work? Yeah, absolutely. So with our um, Airbnb partners, we have a section of our website called Preferred Airbnbs. So one of the things from my perspective is, you know, Airbnb partnerships are great because those hosts can refer business directly to us. But I really wanted to think about what's the value that we can drive them. And one of the things that we just talked about was the traffic to the website, right? So if people are searching Scottsdale Bachelorette, maybe they need a place to stay. So we do have a section of our website called Preferred Airbnbs. And so what we do is we have all of our preferred Airbnb partners on there. We want to make sure that they're great Airbnb yeah. hosts, right? Because that's sort of the thing about, you know, this market being quite saturated with Airbnb. Airbnbs is there's some really, really great ones and then some not so great ones. And we don't want to be featuring those ones that aren't so great. So we do go through sort of a qualification process. And then if they meet that qualification, we'll put them on our website as a preferred Airbnb. And we're also able to track the clicks. So we know how many clicks are going from our website to their listing so that we can actually turn around and say, hey, we're giving you value in addition to you referring us to your guests. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, and really, truly, I mean, the Airbnb experience is so important. It's such a vital part, I feel like, of what you're doing too, yeah. right? Making sure that uh, they're, they're, people are staying in a phenomenal Airbnb and you guys are really well integrated. Talk to me about, you know, when you're going and setting up, you know, how important is it, you know, from the setup to the takedown? Because you were saying a little while ago that, um, you know, like on a Sunday, for example, when, yeah. uh, you know, you guys are getting in there at 6, 6.30 in the morning to get yeah. everything taken down on their behalf. I and mean, you really, truly are making it like a seamless experience for them, right? Yeah. And so with this business, like setup and breakdown are the two most logistically difficult parts of our business, right? Because you've got a bunch of people coming in on the same day, which is yeah. typically Thursday or Friday. They all want it, you know, they all want their decorations set up before check-in. And so by having these partnerships, we're able to actually work directly with the host partner or the property management company and get earlier access to the house. So whereas maybe for the guests, their check-in isn't until three or four o'clock PM, the host can give us access at 10 or 11 AM to go in and set up and do our thing. Um, same thing on the back side, whenever we're there checking out, if we do happen to slip past, you know, the 10 or 11 AM checkout, we can go in there and still collect our stuff and, and get our job done. And so it's really a win-win for everyone when we have those partnerships. The Airbnb host is getting more referrals. We're getting more referrals from the host. The client is getting a better experience because it's getting done before check-in. And, you know, we're able to recommend really great properties to our, to our audience and our, to our users. Which is truly phenomenal. You know, you've obviously now been able to scale this company to upwards of a million dollars a year in revenue, which is truly astonishing in, in such a short window of time. Obviously, you're not anywhere close to, you know, being where you want to be. If you had to tell me maybe one of the biggest challenges that you've faced in getting the company to where it's at today, what would that be? I think just the logistics of it all and just how do you make enough parties happen in such a short amount of time that you can actually do that number, right? You know, when I first started, I remember there was weeks where I was like, oh my gosh, we have six in one day. And it was like, my heart dropped and I was like having cold sweats at night, like thinking, how are we gonna make this happen? But I think it's just about like every single week, you know, you do have to kind of push the envelope a little bit and get kind of uncomfortable with like, oh, this is a lot of parties this week. Are we gonna be able to do it? Um, but grow in a way that you're thinking, okay, well, are we doing smart decisions to make this happen? Are we being prepared? Are we preparing properly so that we can make this happen and not sacrifice the client experience? So I think that's really, you know, the challenge is whenever you're growing a business, if you're, first of all, you know, getting the business is the hard part, but then executing on mm -hmm. it, right? It, we can get 50 people to book with us in one week, but then it's like, how do we make that happen, yeah. right? In a way that we don't kill ourselves and also, you know, create any type of bad experience for the clients. Sure. Have you ever had to turn anybody down as a result of you literally having too many bookings to deal with the logistics? We have, yeah. This past uh, spring, it was Cinco de Mayo weekend and, you know, everyone wants Final Fiesta for Cinco de Mayo weekend. And we just had so many parties that week that, you know, I just made the decision, hey, we're going to cap it. We're going to shut down any more yeah. bookings because we've never done this many bookings before and we don't want it to go bad, right? Mm -hmm. Like a big thing for us is like reviews, making sure everyone has a good experience and, you know, also just ourselves, like we're working, you know, 10, 11 hour days setting up in the heat and in the sun and it's, it's a lot of work. And so, 
you know, I think you, you know, going into next year, right, we can think about do we need another team or do we need another van so that we can condense that time. But, you know, like I was talking about earlier, is constantly reevaluating the business to be like, how can we make this better than what it is today and also try to accommodate more clients if we need to. Where can people find you if they're looking to get a hold of you, uh, if they want to connect with you or if they yep. want to connect with uh, Scottsdale Bachelorette or really anything, how do they get a hold of you? Absolutely. So our website is scottsdalebachelorette.com. Our social media handles on Instagram and TikTok are both Scottsdale still bachelorette and then our email address is hello at scottsdalebachelorette.com and i do monitor all of those so if anyone wants to reach out to me directly feel free to send us a message and be happy to chat thank you so much casey thank i you. really appreciate thanks it thanks for stopping yeah. by